Hello fungi and welcome to the first channel about fungi. Today's video is about a really cool phenomenon, dimorphism in fungi. We usually think of fungi as having specific shapes. For example, some fungi like Saccharomyces and Cryptococcus exist as single-celled yeasts. Others, like Aspergillus and Potritis species, form mycelium, which is a network of threads called hyphae, and we describe them as mold or filamentous fungi. But some representatives of fungal kingdom were adapted to change their life form depending on specific environmental conditions. This phenomenon has the name dimorphism. Dimorphic fungi are organisms that have the ability to switch between two morphologies yeast and mold forms. The term dimorphism can be broken down into two parts, di meaning two and morphism meaning forms or shape. Similarly, monomorphic fungi have only one life form, whether it's the yeast or filamental mold form. Sometimes you might hear the term polymorphic fungi. These fungi can have more than two life forms. They can exist as yeast, develop hyphae-like molds, and also form structures known as pseudohyphae. The ability to shift between hyphae and yeast forms is crucial for the pathogenesis, virulence, and life cycle of dimorphic fungi. So what triggers fungi to switch forms? And there are many factors involved, but temperature is so important that scientists categorize these triggers into thermal and non-thermal factors. Fungi that can switch forms depending on the temperature are called thermally dimorphic fungi. In the soil, at temperatures between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius, thermally dimorphic fungi grow as mycelia, producing infectious spores called conidia. When these soils are disturbed, conidia and fragments of mycelia can become airborne, creating infectious particles that mammals can inhale. Once inside the lung, these fungi transform into pathogenic yeast or in the case of coccidioides species, into spherules containing endospores. Although infections sometimes remain asymptomatic, they can progress to cause symptoms such as pneumonia and disseminated diseases that affect multiple organ systems. The severity of the infection is influenced by the size of the inoculum and the strength of the host's immune system. Transition from mold to yeast is accompanied by characteristic changes in the cell wall, membrane lipids, intracellular signaling, and gene expression. If fungi are restricted to the mycelial phase due to biochemical or genetic factors, they are unable to cause disease. Here are examples of some thermally dimorphic fungi. Histoplasma capsulatum, Blastomitis dermatitidis, Coccidioides species, and Tularomyces marinefii. In case of non-thermally dimorphic fungi, morphological switch induced by factors other than temperature. Other factors such as CO2 and oxygen tension, as well as biologically active compounds, can significantly influence fungal growth and morphological conversion. For instance, carbon dioxide tension is 150 times higher inside mammalian lungs than outside. For coccidioides, imitis, the conversion from conidia to spherules requires not only a temperature shift to 37 degrees Celsius, but also an increase in CO2 tension. Without high CO2, conidia germinate into mycelia instead of spherules. In mucor species, yeast growth occurs under anaerobic conditions, while high fall growth is observed when oxygen is present, such as in tissue environment. One of the main hormones of the female reproductive system, estradiol, binds to the cell surface receptors, inhibiting the phase transition of Paracoccidioides brasiliensis at 37 degrees Celsius. This may explain why this type of mycosis is rare in women. The other non-thermal factor factors essential for fungal life form transition could be mating hormones, nitrogen sources, quorum sensing molecules, and different insect stimuli in case of entomopathogenic fungi. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting fungal adventures.